today's guest is the founder of Distill Plus Express, a health and wellness consultancy specializing in natural solutions. With over 15 years of experience in the trending forecasting industry, she is a thought leader and early identifier of long range trends in the wellness space. She provides the, the opportunity and game plan empowering a life of abundance in health, wealth, love, and happiness. Welcome to the show, Jamie. How are you doing? Oh, thank you so much for having me, Toby. It's so nice to be here. Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Mirror Talk. I'm so excited to be speaking with you and I'm looking forward to everything I'm going to be learning from this conversation. But before we, we jump down into the topic for this episode, can you share a little bit about your life journey so far and the inspiration behind Distill Plus Express? Sure, happy to. And Distill and Express is actually the process of how essential oils are created. So my wellness journey began with essential oils, actually. So I had a birth with my son uh, in New York City, and it was a pretty traumatic birth. I had a emergency C-section, and it was all really scary. And so with my daughter, I was determined to have a natural birth. And at my eight months of pregnancy with her, I still had no solution. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm really scared. The first birth was scary. And then I discovered essential oils mm -hmm. and I was able to have a natural birth with my daughter using only essential oils, no other pain medication. And when I birthed her, I feel like I took my power back and that's how Distill and Express was created. So Distill is the process of like flowers. So like roses and things like that. And Express is more like lemons and limes, like the rind. So oh. I came up with that name just through essential oils. And then my girlfriend started to like it. They're like, oh, you can distill things and express yourself. So I just kept the name uh, for my manifestation business uh, because it seemed to be fitting. So it started, I thank my daughter and the natural birth as the start to my wellness journey. Wow, that's awesome. So now do you, do you have a line of essential oils for yourself from, from a company or do you recommend some? Yes, I actually recommend doTERRA. And the reason why I choose to partner with them is because they're the number one essential oil company in the world, mm -hmm. but they also test every bottle. And I think that's really important because I use essential oils as natural medicine. Like in my home, I don't have Advil or anything like that. I only use oils. I use them on my children. I drink them. I clean with them. Like I have no other products. So if you're going to use essential oils in a medicinal way, mm -hmm. you want to make sure they're tested properly and that they're, they're real essential oils. Some things that are on the market are synthetic and their chemicals. So you have to be really careful of what you're using, especially if you're going to diffuse them or be you know, ingesting them or putting them on your body. Yes. You really want to make sure they're medical grade. Mm, yeah, that's true. That's what I was seeing on your Instagram page where you wrote plants over pills, for example. That's where it came from, I guess. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I just, I really feel like looking at our wellness holistically, so body, mind, and spirit. Mm. And I prefer to use plants. Um, I don't use any other type of medicine or pharmaceuticals. I just use mother nature uh, for happiness and for anything that I might need. And it's been working really well. That's awesome. That's great. That's really good. And yeah. you're a manifestation coach. I got to learn about, and you said it also earlier now, but earlier I've been, earlier I've been you know, studying about um, law of attraction and uh, maybe I would love you to explain to me um, what is law of attraction and how can I make the, how can I make use of the law of attraction to work in my favor, for example? Exactly. Well, but very important to know. So the law of attraction is very simple. It's like a gravity. It's like the law of gravity. <laughs> so there are actually, there are 12 laws that govern our universe, but one of the most popular ones in manifestation is called the law of attraction. And it simply states that that which is like unto itself, it is drawn. So I have many clients coming to me saying, Jamie, I want to manifest. And I'm like, you're already manifesting. If you're alive and you're awake, you're manifesting. You just might be manifesting things that you don't want mm -hmm. because you are attracting, you are manifesting, creating, taking energy and creating in your th 3D world 
your existence around you, where you live, who your friends are, who your family is. You've already manifested it. But what we want to do is manifest the things that we do want. And the way that we do that to be is with um, vibration. So whatever we're vibrating at, it might be stress. It might be anger. It might be sadness, like the lower levels of vibration. You're attracting that because the law of attraction is just like the law of gravity. It just brings you more of where you are and what you're doing. So what you want to do is you want to elevate your vibration so that you're in alignment with what it is you want. So if you want abundance, you want love and romance, you want happiness, you need to elevate your vibration. And then when you are in the state of love and joy and happiness, that's what you're going to attract. Okay. So for, for a layman out there, what's this energy and vibration? Like <laughs> I have friends who ask me, what is vibration? What, are you, what do you mean by energy? What energy are you talking about? <laughs> yes, it's so funny because it, we look around us and you see the table, you see the laptop, you see the microphone, and it seems solid mm. because there's a field around it. But actually one of the laws of the universe is that with the law of vibration, everything is moving and vibrating. The atoms, the molecules have energy around them. There's energy right here around me, like all around us. So what we want to do is we want to focus energy in the direction of the higher vibration. So using our mindset to do that. So I use really powerful tools to change my mind. I use hypnosis. I use meditation. I use emotional freedom techniques. You probably have seen tapping people use tapping, um, neuro-linguistic programming to change my mindset so that I'm vibrating because everything's moving all the time at a certain frequency, a higher level frequency so that I can be aligned with the things that I want, like abundance and love and joy. Yes, yes. So this tapping you're talking about, is that, does that have to do with energy healing or um, is it Reiki or something? Yes, actually, um, emotional freedom techniques, also known as tapping, mm-hmm. is you're tapping on certain acupressure points. So it's like, you know, acupuncture, but you're tapping on certain points on the body and you're vibrating on a certain frequency. So you might focus on something that is a challenge for you, something that you're working on, and then you tap in the positivity. And then you just, you drink a lot of water to release any negative energy and you move yourself forward into a positive state. And then when you're in the positive state, you're going to attract more positive because that's what the law of attraction does. Yes. Yes. That's true. That's very true. So it's, it's, it helps you to st- always stay positive and stay at a very high frequency, stay at a very um, positive state of mind at all times. Yes. And I think one of the things that's super important to know and that I've learned through my studies mm-hmm. is that, we are creating our 3D world or manifesting based on our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is created from the ages of zero to seven. So everything that we absorb from our parents, from our teachers, from our siblings, uh, kids at school, on the playground from the age of zero to seven is influencing our life. Mm. So let's say you had a traumatic event or you know, um, one of the most popular things that my clients come to me for is their relationship with money. And they don't realize that they're having trouble with money because of their subconscious mind. But it's like, when they think back, they're like, oh, every my father would say, money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil, filthy rich. These things are implanting ideas into our subconscious mind, which then is creating our reality. So that's one of the things that we have to remember about our mind is a computer and we have to program it with the things that we do want. Uh, Yeah, I understand. So I I guess this is what inspired you to incorporate meditation and manifestation into your children's life and daily routine. Yes. And I mean, I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old, so I do conscious parenting very thoughtful activities for them. The way that I speak to them is in neuro-linguistic programming. So for example, the mind thinks in pictures. So if you say to your child, don't spill the milk, like if you close your eyes for one second, all you see is spilled milk, right? Yes. Because your mind thinks in pictures. So if you want your children to keep everything neat and tidy, say, let's keep everything neat and tidy. 
Ah, and I see everything see a picture time. of everything neat and tidy. So once you start learning some of the way the mind works, you can use these techniques with anyone in your life. I use it with my children. I use it with my clients. I use it in my daily life when I go to Starbucks. Um, I'm like, let's make sure everything is speedy and on time. Mm, yes. <laughs> like then you get a picture of that. And these small influences really magnify and change the trajectory of your life mm, 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 right mm, yes, yes like to live in ease and harmony and stress-free and mm. once you start learning about how the mind works and how to use your mind then you can start manifesting the things that you want yes and are there easy ways to um, you know incorporate meditation and manifestation to our daily routine like our daily activities are there mm -hmm. like some tips or tricks for that? Yes. It's like, you have to become that person. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to make a conscious decision to say, I want to take control of my life. I want to take control of my destiny and be in the driver's seat of it because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just operating on the, like the subconscious. So you have to, I use beautiful affirmations. I use hypnosis. I, I do tapping in the morning to get myself in the higher vibration so that I'm starting my day out on the right foot. I'm getting out ahead of it. So if, if there is a challenging moment with the Uber driver or at Starbucks or whatever it is, I'm able to overcome it so much easier because I'm at a high vibration. If you're yeah. coming at troubles and you're down here, you're going to be struggling. Yes. Like, yeah. That's true. That's true. So can you educate me on, on the science and the mindset behind manifestation? Like for a layman out there, for myself who does not, I don't really know much about manifestation. Um, what's the science behind it? And how can I, you know, um, align my mind to manifest something proper for myself? Yeah, so s some of the things that you can do. So really just understanding that and taking ownership of your life of saying, I'm already manifesting. So if I'm manifesting things that I don't want, what are the things that I do want? So that's the law of polarity. So what you could really do is I love doing this ritual write down the things that you don't want on a piece of paper, things that are bothering. It might be a relationship. It might be your job, whatever it is, just all these things are bothering me. You can rip that up and you can flush it down the toilet. Or if you have an, in a safe way, if you have like a little fire, let's say you're camping, you can put it into the fire and then immediately write down the things that you do want. So the complete opposite of that. So what are, what, are, what are your goals? What are you trying to manifest? What are the things that you want into your life? Because if you want those things, all you need to do is align yourself with them and then they'll manifest. Mm. So a lot of what I do is I do visualization. The subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. So that's why when we see kids in school daydreaming, that's really important for them to do. That's even more important than them learning AP calculus or whatever that might be. It's like daydreaming, yeah. visualizing. So the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I visualize. I put my subliminals on, I visualize, and I say, what do I wanna bring into my life now? What are my dreams? What are my hopes? What are my wishes? And then I use another tool. Um, it's like journaling, but I call it scripting. So what I do is your life is like a movie, you're creating it. So what you do is you start writing down everything you're grateful for, uh, everything you're grateful for. I'm grateful for my laptop. I'm grateful for my apartment. I'm grateful for my car, whatever it is. You're, I'm grateful for my children. And then when you're in that high vibrational state of what you're already grateful for, then you start scripting in the things that you do want, but as if it's already happened. So I'm grateful for my million dollars. I'm grateful for my Mercedes Benz or whatever. I'm grateful for my Louis Vuitton bag, whatever it is that you want vacation with my family. Yes. So, but when you're in that high vibrational state, that's when you script in the things that you do want. So it's all about the energy, the emotion, the feeling of it. So I do things like that to get my day started. I, I'm constantly listening to inspirational podcasts and, and literature, um, things like your podcast, because we are the difference of the five most common people that we spend our time with. Mm. So if you want to be a millionaire, let's say, what does a millionaire read? How does a millionaire spend their day? You need to start embodying that. 
-hmm. and being around people that are positive too, that are on a mission too, that are driven just like you are, that have goals just like you are. You want to be surrounding yourself with positivity Mm -hmm. because if you're focused on the negative, you're just going to get more of the negative. That's very true. That's very true. But how, how can you get rid of the negative? You know, in this world of, you know, bad news and, you know, negativity just flying around, how can you close your eyes and ignore the negative that is flying around us? Well, first of all, don't watch the news <laughs> because it's not news, it's sensationalism. So don't yeah. do that, <laughs> number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only bad stuff. They don't you know, show like someone rescuing a kitty out of a tree. It's Mm -hmm. all bad things. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to watch the news, you're just going to attract more bad things and negativity in your life. And so that's one of the things that you start doing when you start this process is eliminating negativity. And sometimes along the way, especially being an entrepreneur, it can be lonely. Like sometimes you lose friends because you were at a vibrational level of like complaining and talking about, I don't have enough money. Da, 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 da. Well, if that's not where you want to be, you have to move away from that. And sometimes people fall, you know, out of your life and habits start to fall out of your life. And you're like, you you know, a month later, 30 days later, you look around, you're like, whoa, I'm a different person. I'm getting closer to my goals. I'm getting closer to where I want to be. So it has to be a conscious effort of tuning out the negativity and focusing on the positive with podcasts, books, speakers, events, things like that, that you want in your life. Yes. And I I like what you just said now. It's, it's, it's 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 a process, as you said earlier, it's a process like you look back 30 days afterwards and notice, yeah, I'm a different person. It's not like the next day that you, oh, you're all changed and all done. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You have to take your time. And that's the thing. Using these tools like hypnosis or EFT, they're going, it's going to speed up the process more quickly rather than just, you know, trying to do it with your conscious mind. So they're definitely tools that you can use to make things happen more quickly. But give yourself 30 days. And then you look back and you're like, whoa, like I'm a different person now. And then you just get more and more and more and you get further along your journey. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I did like all that, you know, earlier you made mention of um, scripting, for example, you know, visualize, visualization, for example. I did like some other methods of manifesting that other people could maybe find easier to do or easier to use. Um, other than visualization? Yes. 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 Well, I mean, the thing about uh, the tools that I recommend are free, Uh right? Yes. So it's like anyone can meditate. You could just walk into the woods or go into your bathroom even and sit there for five minutes and quiet your mind. Mm -hmm. Visualization, you can lay in your bed and visual and just daydream about what it is that you want. Scripting, all you need is a notepad and you can write down what you already have and what, and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably have a smartphone, you probably have earbuds. You can think of something that you're grateful for and get into that vibration. I mean, that's the great thing about, you can start with nothing Mm. and really get yourself going. And then if you, you know, you can move further along and I love to work with people and have you as my client, which is an investment in yourself, but you can start with meditation, which is Mm. completely free. You know, yes. I mean, the apps are good, but you don't have to. You could just quiet your mind. Yes. And th- th- thanks for mentioning that already. I'm going to place the link to your website in the show notes for this episode. So anyone who is interested in working with you could just click on your on the link and get across to Jamie to get some consultation because you you offer some consultation and some other services to people who, want, who are looking into wellness in, in life. Yes. And also right now I do have online as well, a free 30 minute masterclass. So you can learn about um, manifestation and the laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. So that is called mastering your second act. And you can go on there and take my free masterclass. So that's another tool that you could use that's um, free as well. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Well, can you educate me on, you know, how the subconscious mind works? Because we've we've talked about this earlier already. How does, it, how does it actually work? Yeah, so it's interesting. So I'll use this as a perfect example of like New Year's resolution. Mm. You're like, I'm going to get in shape, right? Yeah. So on January 1st, you're like, I'm going to put my running shoes by the door. I'm going to set my alarm for five o'clock in the morning and I'm going to work out and I'm going to be healthy. Well, by January 15th, you are no longer working out and you've slept through your alarm and that's it. 
mm-hmm. because you're trying to make the change on the conscious level. You can do it. It takes a lot of willpower to do it. Uh, and people can achieve things after 30 days of shifting their personality, but it's much easier to change on the subconscious level. So your subconscious mind, the one that's created from the age of zero to seven, it's kind of like the captain of the ship. It controls everything from like brushing your teeth, driving your car. You're like, if sometimes you go to work and you're like, how did I get here? Like, I can't remember exactly where I turned. That's your subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is like, we're animals right so it's there to protect us it's there to keep us safe if we had to like every time remember take the toothpaste and then put the toothpaste on like we would never get anywhere we would be like tying my shoe like okay lace like our subconscious mind is there to guide us to to um to keep us safe to move us through life but it's also there to keep us safe so one of the things of keeping us safe is not to leave the mass group and becoming an entrepreneur and successful and speaking on stage in front of thousands of people, that's like scary. Mm -hmm. So your subconscious mind is also controlling how you appear in the world, how you show up in the world and the actions that you take. So what we have to do is we have to train our subconscious mind. We have to reprogram our subconscious mind to get the things that we want, Mm -hmm. right? So if one of the things that you want to achieve speaking on stage, which is one of the biggest fears in the world. People have more fear of that than dying. We have to do some hypnosis. We have to change the subconscious mind to create what we want instead of our old monkey mind or our old habits from ancient times. We have to break it. So for example, that I gave you of the um, working out January 1st, if you do it with the subconscious mind and you do hypnosis and you do NLP and you do um, EFT, you can train your mind to say, not that I work out all the time, but that I'm a healthy person. Hmm. You're a new person. You're a healthy person that drinks water, that reads inspirational books, that goes to the gym, that eats healthy food. You're a new person. It's not just one action of like, I go to the gym. Hmm. So when you have changed the subconscious mind to become this healthy person, and if you tie it back to a why, kind of like Simon Sinek says, start with why, or if you tie it back to a meaningful purpose, then it becomes even stronger. So let's say you're like, I want to be a healthy person because I want to have energy to chase after my kids. That becomes stronger for you. It's not just like, oh, I want to be thin because I want to fit into my skinny jeans. You want to be a healthy person overall. And so then we can start doing hypnosis and all of these things to change the subconscious mind. So then a healthy person naturally gets up and goes to the gym. You don't have to think about it. Your subconscious mind is doing it for you. So therefore it's easy, right? When you change the subconscious, you become that person. It's not a thought. It's not like, oh, I have to like get my gym clothes. It just, you're automatically doing it. Yes. It becomes like an habit or is it different from an habit? Yes. No, it's like a habit. It's a, Mm. it's a habit for the new persona that you've become. So of course I drink a lot of water because that's what healthy people do. Of course I go, it's not even a question and it's not something that you have to think about. When you're changing things on the conscious level, you're using willpower, you're struggling, you're going, oh, I have to achieve it. You're pushing yourself. When you change things on the subconscious level, it just is automatic. That's what the subconscious mind is for. So we just program it with the things that we want. Yes. But so, for example, for a, a couch potato or something like that, or something, <laughs> so I'm so sorry for using that term. Well, someone wants to rewire his or subconscious, someone wants to leave the couch and start becoming much more active. How can a person, you know, reprogram his or subconscious to um, living, um, to live like a relaxed state of, you know, living, living life to becoming much more active um, in life? Yeah, well, I would use these tools that I've mentioned. I mean, the first thing that I would do, I would write down, you know, why do I want to become healthy? What's the drive? What's the reason? And when you start writing down the why, you're going to become up with much more stronger reasons for why you want to be healthy. And then start doing these tools that I've mentioned. You get up, you visualize yourself as a healthy person. You use EFT and you tap on being a healthy person. You use hypnosis in transforming into a healthy person and not just for weight loss, 
but becoming overall healthy. And I have a program that I do with my clients to manifest anything that you want, whether it's money, whether it's a relationship, whether it's like health and wellness, whatever it is that you want, I follow the same process mm. to get there. And it's, it's changing the subconscious mind. It's using these powerful tools to reprogram your mind um, mm. to become the person that you want. Yes. Can, can you tell me a little bit about this program? Like, it's so, uh... Yeah, it's exactly what I've been saying. It's a, um, okay. I start with astrology and I read your birth chart to know where your, um, your career path is, your type of personality, how you are with family, wealth, um, fitness, all of those sorts of things. So we get an idea of your personality. Mm -hmm. And then we do visualization. We do um, EFT time techniques and hypnosis. So all of these tools that I do on myself is what I use for my clients in my signature program so that they can manifest what they want. Yes. I'm happy you brought up astrology. Um, is there a science behind it that listeners out there or myself could you know, learn better from to understand astrology much more better? Yes, sure. I'm happy to talk about it because I feel like there's a lot of um, stories or, or things that people say about astrology that just... It, I want to clear it up. So astrology is just really the science of where the planets were in alignment when you took your first breath. So that's why when I'm doing a reading for you, if I did one for you, Toby, I would need to know the location of where you were born. So exact like geometric location on the planet. Um, so like city, country, all of that. The time, the exact time. Like, so it, there's a big difference between 12 and 1201 because the planets move so the time and um wait birthday time and location so as long as i have that information i can read your birth chart to see where the sun the moon uh jupiter mars venus all of these planets that represent different things and then there's different houses that represent different parts of your life so money and abundance um health family, your vocation, or like what you would focus on your career. And I use that to guide my clients in the right direction for their life. And this works 100%. The information you get from it is always like 100% accurate and helps them. Yeah, it's just where the planets were when you were born. So yeah. Yeah. and I've gotten really good results from it. And my clients are very happy mm. with the information. So it's been going well. Yes, that that's, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yes. So I, I have this question in mind. You know, earlier we were talking about, you know, energy and vibration and, you know, you know, having this positive mindset. How can I, how can I always be present in the moment and also have positive energy at all time? Like, I always want to be in your room, like meeting with you, sitting down with you now, talking with you. And I want to have positive energy. I want you to feel my positive positive energy and vibration and also i want to be present in the moment right now enjoying this conversation with you to the end how can i yeah. do that yes well i mean the thing is unfortunately we're not going to 100 percent all the time be positive because we're human beings we get triggered we go through things we are emotional and you're going to feel sad and i think that's been a, a change in the manifestation world people are like well you just always have to be positive it's like well that's not possible like sometimes you're going to be sad and you really should feel into those feelings and tears are healing they're purging and they're you know you're releasing things and then once you felt those feelings use some powerful tools to get you into a happier state so breath work is super important. So let's say you're stressed, you're in traffic, you're commuting, or you're at your in-law's house or wherever you are, whatever you're doing that's stressing you out. I don't know. Yeah. Um, deep breathing can help because what you want to do is regulate your nervous system. So the breath and like not shallow breath up here, that's like you're running away from a tiger. It's very stressful, but like deep belly breathing just doing five minutes of breath work can really relax you and your vagus nerve, that the thing that makes you stressed. Um, meditation really helps as well. Reading, I find, I don't know how this is in Germany where you are, but many Americans do not read anymore because everything's on our phone, everything's too fast. 
reading calms the mind, journaling. So, and as you do it more, like people are like, Jamie, I can't meditate. It's like a, it's like a muscle. It's like practicing like any muscle. You have to work the muscle yeah. for it to start to take place. So for me, because I have this practice, it's like something sad might happen and I might grieve, but I'm able to quickly move into a place of joy because I have that muscle. I know yes. where to focus my mind. Like mm. I can meditate for 30 minutes and focus my mind. But mm. if you're just starting off, you might only be able to meditate for five minutes. So it's that muscle, it's, it's resiliency. Yes. It's resiliency, like as an entrepreneur or a CEO of business, you're used to failure, mm. but after you've had it several times, you know that success is around the corner. Yes. So you're not in a state of fear or anxiety. You just know that that's a part of having a business of mm. sometimes sales are down. <laughs> on. So resiliency is super important to the manifestation process and to remaining positive and to move forward. But it's a muscle. You, ha you have to start somewhere. It's not like right off the bat, you're resilient, but you can do it with practice for sure. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's good. So are, are there like some ways where, um, or are there like some methods or some um, tips which I could use or anyone out there could use to live a lifelong wellness life? Like I'm asking this question because you are a wellness consultant and you have a lot of mm -hmm. ideas and experience with wellness. Are there like some yeah. simple, simple things to do? Well, I think it's looking at everything holistically. Like people are like, Jamie, so I can never eat chocolate. I'm like, well, if chocolate brings you joy, eat chocolate, but don't eat like a whole bar of chocolate. It's about balance. It's about emotion, about living in joy and, and being happy. So it's like that book, uh, Spark Joy, of like what, um, what brings joy into your life. So I think of human beings at, at holistically. What's happening in your mind? Like, what are you feeding into your mind? What are you reading every day? What kind of information are you taking in? Food. What type of food are you taking in? Like, I only eat organic food. I drink proper water. I don't drink alcohol. Uh, if doing these things helps me stay well. And your body, are you working out? Are you taking the time to sleep? That's one of the things that people skip. They're like, I can only sleep six hours because I'm so busy and I'm so stressed. It's like, well, you're really stressed because you haven't slept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Sleep. And, and being holistic about it. So it's not about like, oh, I can't eat sugar anymore or I can't eat a chocolate bar. It's more about looking at things holistically and like really having a balance in your life um, and what makes you feel good and what makes you happy. Yes. 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 Wow. So um, just eating things that are, you know, much more natural, like um, organic. Yes. Yes. And I, I really, I mean, most of my clients are female entrepreneurs. Some of them are moms of several children. They're multitasking, all of those things. I really try to talk to them about self-care and having a routine. So in the morning, are you taking time for yourself? Are you setting up your list of things that you want to accomplish that day? Are you visualizing? Are you meditating? And then taking a break in the daytime when you have lunch to actually sit down and be calm and take a breath. And then at night, maybe you do a bath and you read in the bath and things like that. You can't do that every day, of course, like you know, you have deadlines and things like that. But to, to really be conscious of your self-care and how you have to look after yourself first, right? Sure. We have, and I think a lot of women being moms and caretakers sometimes um, get into their sacrificing and they're putting others before themselves and they forget about themselves. So um, you have to do self-care. Yes, yes. I, I, I'm happy that you made mention of that already. Self-care self is very important. Like you have to find time for yourself to recover or revitalize or get some energy back into your life yeah. yes exactly it's super fun yes so if, if someone wants to like work with you for example for wellness consultancy or so how, what's the best way of reaching out to you is it through your website or email or 
either. I mean, I have my website. I'm always on Instagram as well. And I do some wonderful things. Like I do a women's manifestation group once a quarter and that's eight weeks. And that's really nice because women are together and then they chat and they help each other as well. Mm -hmm. I also do one-on-one coaching and then I do, um, corporate wellness as well. So meditation and manifestation workshops, but you can just reach me on my website or email or Instagram, (laughs) all of those places. Yes. So for a listener out there who has um, listened to this podcast so far or this episode so far to this point, and it's like now, you know, I'm very encouraged or motivated to, you know, start a journey of wellness. What are the, the tips or the encouragement that you, you give such person? Like, what are the, like, the, um, the things to watch out for or the things to, um, yeah, to do? Yes. I think the most important thing we, we were talking about energy and vibration and that mm-hmm. energy is all around us and that we're always vibrating at a certain frequency. So that's where the law of attraction comes into play. Mm-hmm. Checking in with your emotions. How are you feeling in this moment right now? You're like, is this bringing me joy or is this bringing me sadness? Mm-hmm. And as you start to observe and be more of the observer of your own life, it gives you time to understand what makes you happy what's working in your life what's not working in your life so i feel like that's super important um and then the self-care and doing some of these free things that i talked about meditating scripting that's where you can really get started to see small manifestations in your life and then of course i would love to work with you know whoever's listening on the podcast on deeper techniques but check in with yourself See how you're feeling. How do you feel when you're around this specific person? Do they make you feel good or do they not make they make you feel drained? Being an observer of your own life and of your feelings is a great place to start. Yeah, yes. And all of these things would help us to also stay or become aligned with our purpose in life, right? Or are there other ways we could become aligned with our purpose in life? Hmm. I mean... Well, that's why I love astrology, because it gives us kind of a roadmap in a way to our our purpose. But the thing that's so interesting, I recently learned this, we are one in 400 trillion different from another person. So that is how, like, according to science, like our molecules and all of that, we're so different and unique from each other that if you have a calling, like if something is saying Toby, you should really do this. Mm -hmm. Listening to that inner voice is super important because if it's, if it's calling you, it's destined for you. Mm -hmm. It's meant for you. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why you're getting those downloads or those intuitive hits to say, go here, call that person. You know, sometimes it might be weird. Like the other day I wanted a salad, but for some reason, like I was hearing a voice that's not a voice, but like, and I was getting an intuitive hit to go to the, you know, the acai bowl place. And then I went there and then I ran into a client that I had interviewed wow. before. And when we had this beautiful exchange and they introduced me to his friend and blah, blah, blah which is also so very nice after COVID as well. Mm-hmm. But I could have gone to get the salad, which is what my conscious mind was saying. It was like, Jamie, you need a salad. But my subconscious mind told me to go down the street further away. Mm-hmm. And that's when I ran into that person. Wow. So following the inner voice, because we are so unique, is super important. Mm. Trust yourself, trust the inner voice, and follow it. Wow. I mean, that's, 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 that's a wonderful end to this episode already. <laughs> follow, follow, trust yourself and follow your, follow your mind. Follow yeah, that voice speaking to you. Yes. That's exactly awesome. that's what i say and in addition to manifestation and and, manifest and everything joined together you live a very wholesome life and a very fulfilled life yes exactly wow that's, thank you know? thank thank you so much jamie i really appreciate everything i've been able to learn from you in this episode it's awesome thank you so much for having me too thank you